there, cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. It is mid-month book bash, and I am so excited because for the first time in a long time, I have nothing going this weekend. I'm not even working Friday, no appointments on Monday, but there's reasons for that because tomorrow, Friday, I am getting my coronavirus booster, so I'm not expecting I'm feeling well for the rest of Saturday, or the rest of Friday and probably Saturday, uh, Sunday, whatever, but uh, Monday... Uh, they're cutting power. Thankfully, it's not to everything. It's only to things that are like through the entire building. So like all the hallways will be completely dark and there's no cable, there's no internet, there's no water, no running water. And normally they do this once a year, but this is the, they did it six months ago and now they're doing it again. So not fun, not looking forward to it, but hopefully I can get a lot of reading done. Speaking of, I am making progress on the Price of the Ticket by James Baldwin. I don't know if you can see, there's a little mark there where the bookmark had been for a really long time. And now it's moved. And I, the bit I'm in now is basically like his autobiography and I'm finding it very interesting. So I'm looking forward, I'm not planning on finishing this. That's not the goal. It was three to four essays, just one of them, five essays and one of them had to be a hundred pages. Oops. So this though is going well. I am reading my fourth book two prize book, which is Tearjerker. So I probably won't be recording immediately after reading those chapters. And I just do it like once a day and just get all that out. There still has not been a chapter that I haven't cried at. Like, yeah. And then I'm also reading, to balance that out, The Wolf and the Wallflower by Devin Harnoy. And um, I'm sure I'll be holding it up at some point. It is a Regency romance, paranormal romance. So I I'm enjoying it a whole bunch. I'm not doing a spread because I have a larger set of goals that I started actually almost a week ago now. So let's have a look at those. So here's where we stand right now. I'm quite happy with this. Two more essays and press the ticket. Yeah, one of them is a doozy, but whatever. I'm reading book two, prize book four. I'm reading another book. And then this is the more for me stuff and strength. One of those strength routines will be tomorrow after my long run and before I get the shot. Uh, salad because when it's cold I usually don't like eating cold salad so it's trying to force the issue and sleep. My sleep at night has not been going well but I did get that one nap in a few days ago so yeah we'll see how that goes. One thing that happened that I was not expecting is that it got warm. Can you tell because I'm not wearing a fuzzy thing way up to my chin? It feels like May and it's still beginning of March. Very odd but I'll take it at least today. Tomorrow my long run, it's gonna be really warm. And I, it's a newish route. I don't know where all the water fountains are or even if there are water fountains on part of it. Like sometimes usually I pass a park or something where I can kind of nip it and get water, but I don't know. So it's gonna be interesting tomorrow. And tonight's also gonna be interesting because it's the first day of the World Baseball Classic. Japan is playing at home in Tokyo against China. So that will be super interesting, can't wait. A lot of interesting stuff coming up this mid-month book bash, so get stuck in. Oh, Tani is opening the World Baseball Classic with a ball, but you know. It's about 1 p.m. on Friday. This day has been something else weather-wise and the rest. Normally at night, this time of year, we get down to around five degrees Celsius, which is like 40 Fahrenheit, and I love running in that weather. I just, I have a long sleeve shirt over a short sleeve shirt, and it's so comfortable perfect. Today, overnight, we got down to 16 degrees, which is like 60 Fahrenheit. So I went out on my long run this morning and it was not comfortable. It was not fun. I took extra water with me just because I knew I wouldn't be ready for the heat. I was probably going to sweat a lot. It rained on me part of the way through. Like I was really glad I brought a brimmed hat because just these big fat drops and it was just ugly ugly. I didn't feel great. Just ugly. Not a great long run. And then I came back, did a bunch of housekeeping before going out for my booster shot, which went well. I'm still feeling not, not so bad. Not so bad. And uh, it's been a couple hours now. And it's it was beautiful when I went. Clear skies, gorgeous May weather in March. And now it's cloudy again. Just really weird stuff. But I'm home and I don't have to go anywhere. And the fridge is stocked. And I can just kind of hang out here for a few days, which will be just the thing. And yeah, time to get reading. Friday evening. I was expecting to feel pretty crappy by this point, but 
So far, so good. Something like eight hours after I had my booster. My arm's a little sore. It's a little warm. And I'm on the edge of a headache. But other than that, I'm still able to read. And I spent today reading Intruder, which is a buddy read I'm doing with Rachel over at Kalanadi. And that's where my energy has been, <laughs> along with just random booktube watching and eating. I've just been eating little bits out of the fridge. Because like I kept on thinking, oh, I'm going to feel crappy soon. I should just have a little something now. I should just have a little something now. And it's still, still fine. So we'll see how that holds. Uh, Japan is playing Korea in about 30 minutes in the World Baseball Classic. Heated rivalry. So that will be interesting. The Prime Minister is throwing out the first pitch. He's throwing it to the manager, which is kind of cute. Uh, meh. I've added chicken I had in my fridge to my salad. Does it look good? No. Will it taste good? Yup. Just afternoon on a Saturday and I thought I would be out of it by now. I thought that because of the booster I would have a headache and a fever and still so far so good. So I spent the morning catching up on reviews. Felt really good to get them out of the way. Like I can read a ton more books now because I'm caught up on reviews. And uh, I edited a video, just like stuff's coming together. It feels great. One thing that didn't feel great was I finished The Wolf and the Wallflower, and while I really liked the beginning part of it, the end did not work for me. Because it is basically Regency times, homosexual relationships are not looked unfavorably by society, so it looks like they're going to have to literally fight for their an opportunity to be in a relationship publicly, and just as the fight starts, it ends which was so disappointing to me. But also, the way that the end of the book goes, it's basically these two guys telling society that, you know, men loving men and women loving women, there's no problem with that. And yes, I agree with all this. And yes, it's noble. And if you want to have these two guys happy in the society, something's going to have to change. But the way it was done felt really preachy. Um, and I didn't, it was longer than it had to be. So it messed up the whole balance of the book, unfortunately. I ended up giving it three stars. And one other thing that I talk about in my written review is that it gets a little close to gay for you as a trope, which is not a favorite of mine. But then again, I don't really read that much gay for you. So I don't know. I'm having trouble putting it in context. Uh, so... Yeah, lots of complicated thoughts there. So now what I think I'm going to do is to read another chunk from that book two prize book. Sob, because that's just been what's happening with it. And um, reward myself after with maybe some shorter fiction, some shorter romance, something. We'll see how this goes. I'm just excited that I don't have any obligations today. And that I still feel good when I thought I'd feel awful. I'm, I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. I'm trying to use up this tea. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Not that it's going to go stale anytime soon or anything like that, but because it says Christmas and I'm kind of sick of looking at something that says Christmas in March. Like, let's just get this over with. It's Sunday morning and book-wise, a lot has happened. I finished my book two prize book. I read a few chapters and I was like, okay, I can stop here. And then I thought, why would I just put myself through this again? Why not just rip off the band-aid and finish the entire sad book? And I did, and it was sad and it was well-written. And um, it's going to be very hard to rank, so we'll see how that goes. And then I picked up a queer erotic short by Chase Verity called Comfort. It is a non-binary person and a trans woman having, like, meeting again after, like, six years. There's a substantial age gap there. And having some sexy times and also couch shopping, which sounds weird, but it works. And it was just very short. <laughs> like... The reason, and this is in the front of the book, that um, Verity said that they had trouble f filling it out into even like a full, a full novella, uh, is just that the story didn't want to go there, and you do get that feeling. But I like Verity's writing, so it just means I have to go back and read more of their backlist. And then while watching the baseball, yes, Japan won again, I read What the Hex by Alexis Staria. Well, I started it then, and I finished it this morning. This was originally an audiobook original. It is the last traditionally published Daria. Like, I have read her entire backlist except for one short story, which I'm not touching because I wanted to have that one short story just sitting there. And it was pretty good. It is short. 
hundred pages and I think it deals with the length well. We have a woman who is a witch going back to her hometown which is a magical island off the coast of Miami. No one can see it except for people who live there who are also witches and she's going home for her sister's wedding uh, but the groom has been possessed by a demon and so she has to, with the help of her formal high school rival, try and fix all that and get him, get the demon out and do the things. So there's a lot going on here because we have the relationship, which thankfully has a head start from them being rivals in high school, and also world building, how does the magic work, etc. I think she does find a good balance of all of that. At the same time, I would have loved it if this were longer. Uh, I would love to read other books set in this place, but yeah, good. So now I'm sitting here, I've written my reviews, feel caught up, and I also feel like I don't have any logical place to go for my next book. Uh, I'm not touching another book two prize book until at least tomorrow. And there's nothing particularly pressing. I'm through all of my advanced copies, that sort of thing. So what shall be next? I was thinking I would go out and buy Indian, but you know what? I don't feel like going outside. I want to stay in. So I have this is curry that's in like a foil packet that you can boil or put into a dish in the microwave but it doesn't have a lot of veg. So I think I'm going to roast some chickpeas and add some of these to that. Maybe also some veg that I have in the freezer. Better, I think, than how it is out of the bag. That didn't take long at all. Top of the first inning against Australia. There isn't even an out yet. And Otani, third in the order, has a run. Three zip, Japan. So in preparation for not having running water from potentially 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., I have hot water just ready on the go, clean water, cleaner water, because I can put a lid on this one. I have things to wipe my hands in case, you know, that seems like a good idea. I have some tea. I'm not doing green tea because I drink a lot of green tea at once. Just one little small cup of black tea. I have the dishes done. I have gray water waiting right there. We are... We are set. And also like, so I can't turn on the faucet. I have washi tape. See? <laughs> I'm prepared. It's not going to be fun, but I'm prepared. So just before 9.30, the internet went out. And when I checked, the lights are off in the hallway and can't check the water. No TV. Just kind of on my own, which is a weird feeling. And I'm realizing that the only music I have on my phone, I don't want to stream anything because I do not have unlimited data and it gets expensive. But the only music I have on my phone is my music for running, which is all super upbeat and hey! But I remembered I have Radio Paradise, their app, on my phone. And they're a really eclectic, interesting, like, internet radio station. And they have a system where you can download music ahead of time and then just stream it. But it's from your phone. You don't have to use data. And uh, I can use that. I'm excited about that. And I'm going to start my book two prize book. And I have the price of the ticket. We'll see what kind of order those get going. I might be switching between the two. This wasn't my first choice for lunch. I was originally thinking I would put rice in the cooker, set it on a schedule to be done right around noon. But uh, they <laughs> had to go to the supermarket so early. They didn't have anything out yet. All they had were the factory made bentos. So, you know, I'll take it. Here we go, some hojicha. Getting back into price of the ticket. I am making, if I can lift this up, progress. It's so easy to see where I was. But I still have like 40 pages left in this 100 pages. <laughs> and I want to get through it. But I also want to do it justice, you know, and appreciate what Baldwin is putting down. So balance. Coming up on 4 p.m., still no internet, still no water. And I'm, quite, I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm sick of it by now. It's just, yeah. And I think it hasn't helped that the reading I want to get do to, done today is nonfiction. The price of the ticket is going well, but I can't read too much of it at once. I want to absorb everything. And after 15 pages, 20 pages, I just start skimming. And that's just not good because Baldwin deserves to be read closely. And the book two prize book is good. But again, it's not something that you can mainline necessarily or binge. So, find something else? So, I don't know, maybe this? This is quite different, yes? I don't know if you can tell that the light is different because the sun is going down. Because it is 5.40 and there just came an announcement that 
the power is going to be on probably right at six, like water and the rest. I didn't think it would take all day, but what I can tell you is it's a lot more fun passing the time reading fiction than heavy nonfiction. <laughs> I've had a much more enjoyable time these past two hours. Like while I was in the middle of all that nonfiction, I was like, I need to get out of here. I need to maybe I'll go out and buy dinner. And now I'm reading this Katie Robert, which is very sexy, also has Dubcon and some interesting stuff, vampires. I'm into it, but I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I can just make something here at home. I don't need to go out. So the power of um, a really, I won't say it's a really good book of a good book. Tuesday morning. I am headed off to work, so even though my husband's not coming home until late, uh, we're gonna call it here. Price of the ticket, I'm very proud with how I did. Over 100 pages. This should really be half-checked if there were such a thing. I finished these four books. I actually finished a couple more. The one fall down I had was strength. <laughs> I didn't do the strength exercises. I meant to, so that'll be a focus. Salad, did better than I thought. Sleep, all right, so yeah, there we are. Uh, if you would like to talk about anything that happened in this vlog, how are you doing? Let me know what you're reading. Let's talk down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.